Okay, so it's time to start exploring some three-dimensional tools. There's a couple of different ways to get to that. If you right-click anywhere inside of the ribbon, you can come down here to Show Tabs and say 3D Tools. This is kind of nice because you can then go back and forth between your 3D Tool tab and your Home tab that has all of your two-dimensional tools. The other way to get to those tools is by clicking on the gear down here and coming to your 3D modeling space. And this tries to put all of the tools together. So you have your drawing tools here with some of your three-dimensional tools here. So I'll let you go ahead and decide which of those formats you want. Um, again, so you're going to either go to drafting and annotation and then right click in your ribbon, go to Show Tabs and 3D Tools. Have a look around and see which of these formats you would prefer. I'm going to go ahead and, and start with the 3D Tools. Okay, so just as before, we have some basic shapes. So our three-dimensional shapes are box, cylinder, cone. All of these shapes and if you hover your cursor over it, it'll tell you how to draw it. First, we're going to draw a two-dimensional shape, and that 2D shape is always drawn on the XY plane. After the 2D shape is created, then you're going to add the height to it or extrude it. So let's go ahead and just walk through these simple three-dimensional shapes. For a box, and again, Look at where your XY coordinate is. That is where we're going to start on this. You can um, hold down your shift key and push down on your scroll button to look at your orientation. Right now, our coordinate system is at the world view. UCS is at the world view. And when we're specifying our first corner, we're drawing this on the XY plane. So I can just give it x, y coordinates, and that's it. I'm not adding a z coordinate yet. So I'm going to start with the origin, and then maybe I'll go 10 in the x direction and 5 in the y direction for that other corner. So the first thing we've done here, you can see, is create a just a two-dimensional shape on that x, y plane. And then the third point is now going up in the Z direction. So we're going to say the height, and the height is always in the Z direction. So I'll go ahead and give this a height of just 2. So again, the X direction, the Y direction, and then the Z direction. If you need to draw on something that has a different orientation, this is going to be the big deal for three-dimensional is changing your user coordinate system. So you can see how things are oriented right now with X is on the long side, and then Y is on that five, and Z is up. So let's say I want to, instead of draw on the floor, I want to draw on this side, on the X, Z side. So what I'm going to have to do is rotate my coordinate system so that the XY plane is on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and say user coordinate system, enter. And in this case, I am going to rotate around my X axis. So I'm going to click on X. And it uses the right hand rule. So yes, I'm going to rotate around 90 degrees. And you can see that my coordinate system is now reoriented so that my XY plane is on the side. And then if I want to start adding a new object on the side, I can. So again, let's try out this cylinder this time. So we're going to specify a center point, and then the radius, and then the height. And this time, we're going to be drawing again on this XY plane, but we've reoriented it now. So it's, it'll come out of the side of that box. Okay, so we had a length of 10, a height of 2. So let's try this out just right in the center here. So I'm going to say X position of 5, a Y position of 1. That will be the center spot. And I'm going to go ahead and also change from realistic to a 2D wireframe. Sometimes that's a little bit easy to 
to see. And you'll often go back and forth between these views. Okay, so one more try here. So cylinder, and again, from our new XY position, we're going to start it just right in the middle here at 5.1. And maybe I will give this a radius of, I'll say only 0 0.5, just so we can see this. Here comes the height. So if I pull it in the positive z direction versus the negative z direction, I'll go ahead and give it a positive height of 1. And then you can see, so, so we've moved the xy coordinate around, and we're drawing on that xy coordinate. Now right now, this three-dimensional object is a separate piece from this three-dimensional object. One thing that we can do, instead of join in two dimensions, in three dimensions it's called union. So if we have two separate pieces and we want those pieces to be stuck together, let's go ahead and try out the union command. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this object, click on this object, enter, and now they've been smooshed together to one single object. Okay, let's go ahead and try and move our user coordinate system around. This time I'm gonna try and draw something on the top of the box. So user coordinate system. And if I have my snaps on, I should be able to grab this corner and there's three clicks. So where the origin is, and then over where the x-axis is. And be very, very careful when you're doing this because if you don't have it perfectly lined up, everything you draw with respect to this new coordinate system will not be aligned. So I'm really making sure that I'm grabbing this snap setting and getting this perfectly lined up. So there's my x-axis. And now I'm going to put where my y-axis is and we have our coordinate system moved to the top of the box, and then we can try out maybe one of these shapes again. Let's go ahead and try out the cone. So once again, we're going to be drawing a circle, starting with the center, then the radius, and the third thing we specify is the height. And that circle is going to be drawn on the XY plane. So let's go ahead and start this guy up. And we can draw this in the center again, so 5, comma 2.5, and maybe a larger radius this time of 2. For this one, we can either pull this up or we can pull this down. Shall we see what happens when we pull this down instead? So if I remember right, we had a height of 2. So I'm going to give it a negative height this time. See how our z-axis is going up? So positive is up, and negative should get, get us down. So I'm going to say instead of minus 2, maybe minus 4, and we'll see what happens here. Okay, in the 2D wireframe view, it's kind of hard to tell what's happening. So let's go ahead and come back to conceptual view. And you can see right now we have a couple of solids. So I have this original solid here and another solid here. And there's a couple different things that we can do at this point. We can either join them together or let's go ahead and try out the subtract command. So again, hover your cursor over it so that you can get kind of an idea. So we're going to click on first the piece that we want to keep, second, the part that we want to get rid of. So let's go ahead and start this up, subtract, and first the part that I want to keep, and I'm going to hit enter. Second, the part that I want to get rid of, enter. Okay, so we've subtracted out that shape from what we drew. So that is another one. Okay. Let's go ahead and keep exploring these things. Maybe we want to move this around one more time. Just spend some time getting used to moving your user coordinate system around. And I'm going to go back to the two-dimensional wireframe view because I think it's a little bit easier to see. 
And this time I'm going to try and draw something over here on this back. So I'm going to say user coordinate system, enter. And it's asking me for where the origin is. So I'm going to go ahead and snap to this corner. And now where my x-axis goes, click. And where my y-axis goes, click. So now we have user coordinate system on the end, and we can draw something on the end over here. OK, with the new x-y position, let's pick a new shape. And how about a sphere? So for this one, it looks like we're going to be drawing kind of a circle again, only this time because it's not going up or down, it's symmetrical, we only have two points. So the center point and the radius, and it will make a sphere. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on that center point. This x-axis, I believe this was the five length. This is where those coordinate systems will really come in handy. So we have, that's our new origin. This is 0 0.500, you can see on the bottom, and then height of 2. So if we aim for the center of that, that will be 2.5 in the y direction and 1. That gives us something in the middle and maybe we want to bump this out for a radius of 1. Okay, so once again we have our sphere and let's see what other Let's try the intersection. This will actually get rid of most of what we have, but it's a it can be a very useful tool. Okay, so we have two-dimensional profiles, and in this case, it's going to keep where the two objects overlap one another. So we're going to first select the object we want to keep and then the object where the intersection is going to happen. So let's try this out, and this will get rid of most of what we have, but we can, we can go ahead and try it. Okay, so intersect, select objects. Object first, click, and then enter. Try that one, intercept object, click, and click, enter. And you can see that was the only thing that was intersecting on this was just half of that, half of that sphere. I'm going to go ahead and since that got rid of everything, I'm going to redo it. This is kind of nice. You can either redo just one thing or I can actually go all the way down and undo quite a few things all at once. So that will bring us back to that original object that we've created. Okay, so this, this first piece, I'd like you to kind of go through, try out all of these three-dimensional tools and see if you can draw these on the different faces of the, of the block. So make sure that you can move your user coordinate system around to each of the different faces and then experiment with all of those different shapes. And again, we're going to call this just a scribble page. So try out each piece of it. Here's the pyramid. Look at what you click first. So one, two, three. Let's try this guy out. So let's see, five, comma, one. There gets the, and then we're going to pull it maybe straight out. Make sure you're using maybe your, your orth orthographic snaps as well as your object snaps. And again, we can pull this in or out. You could try that subtract command again. Try out the union. The union is, is a good thing to do so that when you rotate these and move them around, everything is connected. So if we, we join all of those into, into one object, let me go ahead and move my coordinate system around. We haven't drawn anything on this side yet. So click the origin, click the x-axis, click up to the y-axis. The more practice you get moving your coordinate system around, the better. And I'm 
using shift and pushing down on my scroll key to, to move this around. The wedge is a very useful tool. It's also a little bit finicky. Read what it says. So the taper will always happen in the positive X direction of the UCS. So, so you make a rectangle, one, two, just like you're making a two-dimensional rectangle. The height of that is always going to be kind of up against where the y-axis is. And yeah, the taper will come down in the positive. So try this thing out. So first, we're going to make the rectangle. So how about 0, 0? And then we can go up to this other point at 5, 2. And you see the direction of this. So it's, it's sloping downhill in the positive x direction. So to get this to go in the right direction, you're going to have to move your coordinate system into the right direction. OK, so that is hopefully a pretty good start with some of these different three-dimensional objects. Here's a, a donut. We can put a donut on here. Let's move that to maybe the, the base. So yeah, just walk through this whole thing. Try out each of these 3D shapes. Experiment with moving your coordinate system around. If you ever want to move it back to where the original position was, Try out the world view. So inside of these, you can click on a face. And sometimes that will be lined up. It's I think it's better to put this onto a corner than to click it onto a face. Try out the um, XYZ. You can rotate it around the XYZ position. Or if I hit Enter, it will bring me back to the original location of it. So if you ever get frustrated and want to just bring it back to where it originally was located, UCS World will bring that back to where it was located. Polysolid, this is for creating, so you, you make kind of a line and then give it a height, a little bit of a different object here. So if we have a starting point, maybe I'll, I'll make it over here somewhere. So I'll say 12, 0. And we can just start making some kind of a wall. This would be good for, for making a maze, maze run or something. <laughs> so you can play around with that. It's kind of a convenient thing. Again, escape will get, out, get you out of anything. Let's see, let me try out the solid editing tools in a different video. So for now, just explore all of these different shapes and explore your user coordinate system. Make sure that you can move your user coordinate system around for this one. I'd like to draw a simple shape and go through just a couple more of these solid editing tools. So you can fill it and chamfer the edge create a shell, try out the, the offset edge and slice. And for these ones, they're not going to work on too complex of a shape. So I'm going to start out again with just very simple box. So here's the base of the box. I'm going to pull it up. And for this one, I will leave it in the 2D wireframe because you'll be able to see what's happening on the inside a little bit better for the shell command. So for all of these, again, hold your cursor over the tool for just a second and it will come up with a description. And the shell command, this warning that they're giving you is a good warning because it will destroy your solid if you're not careful. So it's a very good idea to if you're doing this on something you've worked a long time on, make a separate copy first because you might destroy what you just created. It's a you can't go backwards on this one. It's but it's a really really convenient and nice command if you want to make an empty box or a mug or 
or anything that just has some kind of a wall thickness. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it and start reading the command line. So select a 3D solid. I'm going to click on it, hit enter. And now I'm going to say, what is my offset distance? And I'll call it, I don't know, maybe um, 0 0.25. So we'll make it fairly thin. And you can see now from that 2D wireframe that this box is now actually hollow. So it's just a hollow box. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see if I can undo it. This was a very simple. Um, this was a very simple edit, so it will let us undo it for this one. And I'll show you one more thing. So before I just made it empty, this time I'm going to select the solid and I'm going to remove the top face. So we'll make an empty box. I'm just going to click on the top, see if we can remove that face and click enter and now we'll try that offset distance again and this time let me go ahead and go to the realistic view so you can see what's happened here so so we've turned that solid rectangle into a hollow shell and the faces that we clicked on they got rid of it for us okay so there is the shell Let's go ahead and try the um, try the slice on here Okay, so again, select objects to slice. I'm going to click on this, enter. And this is going to require three points. And you're going to want your snapping tools on so you can grab a point on this. I'm going to grab the wall, come down here, grab the base, and then pull it over and grab some other point. And you might have to um, try that a couple times, make sure your plane goes through the object. I'm going to go ahead and keep both sides, which means I'll hit enter here to do what's in these triangular brackets. And let's try that one more time. So select object and we're going to click, click, and click, click both sides. And now we have sliced it. Sometimes this is where the wireframe view is going to be a little bit better. So we now have two different solids that were sliced apart. Let me go ahead and try out the move command so that we can separate these. So I'm going to grab one of these objects, enter, click on a base point, and I'm just going to pull it away so that you can see that we've actually sliced into this. When we get into our layouts, you can create sliced view without actually slicing your object. It allows us to do um, various different view base. So you don't have to slice it apart to see on the inside, but sometimes when you're editing an object, that comes in handy. Let's go ahead and try out this fillet edge. There's Fillet, which gives you a radius, and chamfer, which gives you two distances. I'll go ahead and try the fillet. And for our radius, since our wall thickness is only 0.25, I'm going to make our fillet radius just 0.2. If it's too large or too small, it won't show up. And next, we're going to just walk around and select the edge. If you want, you can do a chain and select quite a few edges all together. Once you have what you want selected, and it kind of gives you a preview of everything, so once you have it all selected, go ahead and hit Enter, and it gives you a nicer preview, and then you have to hit Enter again to save that. So that will give you just a nice rounded corner, and rounding your, a lot of times a sharp corner that will concentrate stress when we get into finite element analysis you'll see that those <laughs> those very tight corners so you can round it on the top another way let me round these on the inside so I'm going to go ahead and keep that same radius hit enter and this time I'm going to select an edge on the inside and you'll see that it kind of brings that up and again I can just keep walking around selecting those inside 
the lips and I'm using shift and pushing down on my scroll button. So right in the middle of a command, you can rotate and zoom in and out and move things around. Okay, so once you have everything selected, hit enter and enter again. So you can see the difference for the fillet edge that we've added over here. Another very useful command is this right up here, press pull. And what we can do is just take any bound area, make sure that you select on the face of this and not on the edge, and you can pull it up. So let's say we want the floor of this object to come up. And notice I am not clicking on the edge, I'm clicking on the inside of this face. <clears throat> okay, so I click on that and then I can pull this up. And you can either click to pull it up or you can enter some kind of a height to pull it up. So again, you just click on any face and then you can pull it out. If you pull, if you push the face into it, it will actually subtract that surface off. So you can pull it up or you can pull it down. Play around with that. Let's, um, now that we have a thicker surface, let's try out this chamfer edge. <clears throat> so we're going to click one and then tell it the two different distances. Okay, so chamfer edge, select edge or distance. And I'm going to, there's going to be two distances. Let's make these different. So I'll say 0.25 for one and one for the other. <clears throat> and then I will select the edge. And those two distances are going to be defined based on your coordinate orientation. So <clears throat> experiment around with that. Let's go ahead and try out offset edge. So select a face. Let's go ahead and just grab this guy and we can pull this out or in. Now this is not a solid. It's just creating a line. It's kind of like that two dimensional offset line. And then once we have that created, then you can do things like maybe try out the press pull command on it. So if we grab this and it's a closed surface, I can then pull, pull that out using press pull. <clears throat> so there's the offset. Okay, we had union, subtract, inner. Just, yeah, try out all of these different solid editing tools here. So yeah, just keep walking through everything in here and <clears throat> see what kind of objects you, you can make. Let's make something we can use for, for interfere. So that shows us where overlaps are. Okay, so hopefully that was gave you some good ideas. Make a scribble page walking through all of these simple 3D shapes and try out each of these solid editing tools.